Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Uh, wow, there is so much things that are happening, friends. And I wanted to take a few moments here to share some thoughts with you. Uh, I have been really examining uh, some information, especially after getting this correspondence uh, about Professor Chaim Ished. And as you guys know, we did a, I did a video just recently about the professor. Uh, you know, he had came out and basically disclose the alien connections, or more correctly, we should call it, as many of you have pointed out, um, it's fallen angels. Uh, this is the Nephilim, not Nephilim. The Nephilim are the children of the fallen angels, but it is the Nephilim that we are dealing with, and they are back. They're here. Uh, I've I've said this many times, even in the past, I've spoke about this, that we're going to deal with this in the not so distant future. And I know that uh, we're on the precipice of this. But there's some very disturbing things that I wanted to share with you uh, in regards to his statements, regards to information that's been given to me uh, along these lines. So Sit back for a few minutes. Let's look at some of this, rehash what Professor Ishad has said, and then I want to share with you some things that, that's been made known to me as well. And by the way, somebody had sent me a message asking me, was Obama arrested? There's these rumors going around that he had been arrested. Well, I actually took the time to find out, okay, because I keep hearing all kinds of rumors. They're going to lock up Hillary. They're going to arrest Obama. They're arresting all these people. And so I requested information to find out if it was true. And of course, the answer was, unfortunately, Obama has not been arrested. Uh, but it is a sensitive area, and there are several targets that keep being re retabled for action, but Trump just won't sign off on it. And no one seems to really know why, but he's just not willing to sign off on it. But there are those that clearly have violated very serious laws. We've discussed this information before that should be imprisoned. But, uh, and there have been many times where the president has said that he was going to do it, but he just hasn't done it. Uh, but anyway, by the way, I know I'm wearing my toboggan and stuff. It's been very cold out and stuff, and I haven't had a chance to comb my hair and stuff. So it's all sticking up every kind of which way you could imagine. So, uh, no, it's not a kippa. All right. So just so in case anybody gets that kind of crazy idea going on. No, it's not. Uh, at any rate, there's a lot of things that have been going on. Before we get into uh, Professor Chaim, the issue with Iran, that is definitely on the table. And it does still seem to be that all hands are on deck, we are probably more than likely going to war with Iran. Uh, I've also been trying to find out because, you know, we also saw one of the uh, president's uh, advisors come out and say publicly that was very much been speaking about the fraud that's going on, uh, that there's going to be a peaceful trans uh, transition of power between President Trump and Joe Biden. That was reported by Sputnik. So I came out and I asked the question straight up, is something changing? Are they going to plan B with Biden and Harris? Um, I was told, though, even though the things are very chaotic right now at the White House, uh, that the plan was still that Trump would remain in power. However, there were some of the uh, people that are in that know that are sending mixed messages. So there is still that possibility that Biden may end up taking power. And I was told that if he does, then things will move ahead four years faster than anticipated. We would end up going into communism in this nation. And instead of having maybe four years more uh, of somewhat of a grace period in there. Uh, of course, I did ex express my displeasure of the president's support of warp speed as well as the Noahide agenda. Uh, and, uh, you know, get that out of the way. You know, I understand. I mean, yes, this was a very fraudulent election. No question about it. Um and of course, with uh, Giuliani in the hospital, that was another major blow right now. So 
waiting to see what's going to happen. And I still, my own personal gut feeling and that I think about this is that they're, they're going to overturn it right before the end of the year, something like that. And it's also to maximize the unrest for the disarmament of the nation. That's part of this globalist agenda. And it's really, if you think about it, it's part of this draconian, Nephilim, fallen angel, demonic world order that we're about to find ourselves into in the not so distant future. So that could play into why there is a mixed uh, things, uh, mixed messages coming out of some of these high ranking officials, these elitists, because, because if, if we, if, if, if they are planning on disclosing these demonic beings, as they call them, aliens that we're being surrounded by, uh, then it may be that they're, this is one of the reasons for that. They, they, they just, they need to speed it up because they're concerned that we're going to all lose our minds and not accept their little game plan, uh, which I certainly hope people will wake up because there are thousands of doctors standing up daily on this issue. At any rate, though, Let's go into some of the very important issues. Uh, Professor Ished, Chaim Ished, who is the former head of the Israeli space program, also he's known as the father of the OFEC satellite, uh, he had stated publicly on the Times of Israel's Hebrew version of their paper, the UFOs have asked not to publish that they are here. Humanity is not ready yet. He went on to say Trump was on the verge of exposing them, but the aliens and the Galactic Federation said, wait, let the winds calm down first. They do not want to cause us mass hysteria. They want to make us sane and understanding first. Notice that. They want to make us sane and understanding first. How are they going to make you sane? They have waited until today for humanity to evolve and reach a stage where we will generally understand what space and spaceships are. There is an agreement between the U.S. government and the aliens. There's a lot of countries that have agreements. We know that Eisenhower is the one that kind of started that ball game off, right? Then he goes on, they also signed a contract with us for conducting experiments here. Now, who's the us? Is the us Israel? Because after all, Professor Chaim Ished is the head of the Space Agency for Israel, which don't take that lightly. They, Israel has the eighth largest space agency in the world. At the tunes of billions of dollars that are invested in this. And as we know that the aliens are actually fallen demons, these are Nephilim, the Falim. These are your reptilians. And don't forget, Jesus said, you have your father the devil. Well, actually, not just you are the father of the devil. He called the Pharisees a bunch of serpents and vipers. Isn't it interesting that people like uh, uh, Rabbi Friedman, I believe it is, who openly promotes the idea that the serpent was the liberator for mankind in the Garden of Eden. And then there's a man that wrote a book, I think it's called Aquarius, who is a former government official. Uh, and actually someone had sent me a document that he wrote, very, very telling document. Let me see, I, I might even have, yeah, here we go right here. I got this document from somebody that asked me to read it. I actually sent this to a good friend of mine in the Pentagon. Uh, the Truth About Secret Space Program, 40 pages, November 8th, 2018. Eddie Michael Page. I don't know if that's the guy's name. Who that, who, you know, I'm assuming it is. This information is very accurate. And of course, it brings up a lot of things that I'm aware of. Uh, actually, he's, he's, it, it will be upon the very name Project Aquarius. I think that was the name of the book this guy wrote. Uh, very telling information in here. But he also goes into, I haven't read the entire thing. I've read about, oh, two-thirds of it thus far. So I want to thank whoever it was that sent that to me. Uh, and I think they were asking me, so if you get this message, you'll know now. Yes, the information, I did forward this uh, to the friends of mine in the Pentagon, and they did confirm, yes, the information is very accurate that's in this documentation. Uh, he talks about that they're working with draconians. They're talking about this the serpent race, reptilian type of beings. The most evil of the evilest. And so then when we go back over here and we look at, um, or when I discuss uh, with you here, where Professor Ished is saying they want to make us sane and understanding first, and that also 
he went on to say, they also signed contract with us for conducting experiments here. Well, my big question was, uh, well, maybe this whole corona garbage and the vaccine that goes with it, which we know from many different doctors disclosing the information, my wife included, uh, you know, my wife's a former nurse midwife, also biologist, uh, uh, maybe I should say biology teacher, things like that, but very, very, very learned in those areas there. Uh, and countless doctors, Dr. Sherry Timpany, friends, friends that Yana has as well, Dr. Dr. Day, Dr. Uh, Carrie Maday also, uh, they all discuss these things in great depth together, not just in videos for you, but I get privy, privy to listen to many of their private conversations, uh, just how demonic this vaccine is, the nanoparticles, even the testing swabs that you get, the nanoparticles on there uh, that are on these swabs there, they, they, they go past the blood-brain barrier and you hook yourself, they hook you up to the 5G. They got full control over you. Not to mention, you know, they want to wipe out a certain segment of the population. Boom, they could take you out. Uh, the vaccine itself is deadly, in fact, it's interesting. Speaking of deadly, right? Speaking of deadly, a doctor comes out today, as on, or I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say the date per se, uh, sent to me by uh, Lori, and uh, really appreciate what she had to say there. And this was on Fox News. It was. Award winning race. Hang on. Let me just see if I get his name on here. Um. Let me just play a little clip for you so you can see what I'm talking about here. Let's listen to this. You has been the most injurious to the public and not award-winning researcher, retired microbiologist, Dr. Sukrit Bakadi. Uh, which, in your view, has been the most injurious to the public and not suited to the science? The looming vaccination. The va so the vaccination. Right. Well, okay, so Dr. Sukari. Bakadi, he's a retired microbiologist. I'm going to go near the end here where because she wants to skip over the vaccine part, but she does come back to it. And listen to what he says about the vaccine itself. Listen. Herd immunity. Do you? Do you buy that? What utter nonsense. Someone who says this has not the slightest inkling of the basics of immunology. And this is very, very surprising for someone of Dr. Fauci's standing. And I would dare to defy him anywhere in the world at any time. Well, so you believe that the COVID vaccine is not necessary? I think it's downright dangerous. And I warn you, if you go along these lines, you are going to go to your doom. And it's so, so unnecessary. Notice what he said. Your, Dr. Mercati said you're going to go to your doom. This has been echoed by other doctors, including Dr. Sherry Tinpenny, Dr. Kerry Madej. Uh, you know, many, many of these doctors have talked about the dangers of the vaccine itself. Now, the reason, the only reason I'm bringing this up is for one purpose, and that is to share with you that in what Dr. Isha had said, they're doing experiments. And so my thought was that this must be something to do with the vaccine itself, that this is part of that experimentation, right? I, I actually sent that to Dr. Carrie Madej. And she says, I think you are a bullseye on this. And then I sent it to friends that I have uh, in the Pentagon, and I wanted to kind of get a better idea if they knew anything about this as well. And, of course, it was related to me back that they didn't know much about vaccines and, the, you know, just only the basic uh, basics when it comes to regarding biology. But said that when they were privy to the meetings, uh, the Space Force and the space supply chain or discussions regarding the visitors, 
he said he was always reminded of the uh, series, uh, the TV series, uh, The V, back in the, the mid-'80s. He said mainly because in that particular series, and I haven't watched it, so I'm not really familiar with this, he said that is how accurate they were, the playbook, with what he does know that is going to take place around the year 2025. Now, what was alarming, though, and this is, I think, gives some credence to my theory that this may be the um, this that this may actually be what Professor Ishet is speaking about when they've made a contract to do testing here on the humans. Is he said that they have enlisted the military as part of the survivor beta group who are expected to survive. Starting in 1975, in the early 2000s, the largest beta group not really expected to survive were the homeless, conducted mostly in underground bases out west, New Mexico, California. But he said, I have no idea exactly what was being tested. He said, today's testing has been on the decline, and to my knowledge, it has nothing to do with corona-type virus. Rather, viruses associated with alien life. So imagine that. They've been, they've been doing testing for viruses that affect alien life. Well, maybe we're just being told that the coronavirus is what they're dealing with. Uh, we know that there's some type of, and, I, and I, I shouldn't say we, I don't know personally, but I have heard, and I won't say which doctor has stated this. This is more of a private conversation. That it's very strange that the vaccine has to be placed at such unbelievably low temperatures which raises red flags as to why do you have to have a vaccine at minus whatever it is, some ridiculous figure like minus 70 degrees Celsius or 36 degrees Celsius. You know, only something dry ice could probably get cold enough to keep it that way. So it does seem almost extraterrestrial when you think about it, right? It's, it's just really, it's, it's nuts. But... No, but what was really just got me though as well though is that the military was part of the was part of a beta group testing, right? And then the homeless that were taken in underground bases that nobody ever knew about were being tested. Uh, that didn't expect to survive, but in, I guess in many cases they did, and that kind of shocked them as, as to what happened there. So. I'm very concerned. Now, let, let me go back to the professor's statements here when he says there is an agreement between us, of course, that we already had that. They, they also signed a contract with us for conducting experiments here. They, too, are researching and trying to understand the whole fabric of the universe, and they want us as helpers. There is, you know, he goes into other things we've already talked about, so we won't go into all of that anymore about the underground base Mars, things like that, right? But... One of the things that he states is that they were waiting for the winds to calm down. They do not want to cause us mass hysteria. Or a good friend of mine sends me a message regarding that statement right there. He said, while the information is accurate, in other words, what he's saying about the aliens and the, 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 all these things that he spoke about, uh, Professor Isha did, all that is true. He said it's a bit deceitful in the letting the winds calm down first statement. The prevailing belief with supporting evidence is just the opposite. The visitors want to be introduced to the world officially as Samaritans who present gifts to bring peace and heal. He goes, sound familiar? As in reigning in the start of tribulation. Peace and safety, right? We are about to experience firsthand the most bizarre biblical type 
of things that we've never, I, I say this, friends, you know, even, even after reading uh, this document, The Truth About Secret Space Program by Eddie Michael Page, I could not help but wonder some of the events that have taken place on the planet, biblically speaking, like, for example, Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, the Andalusian destruction, for example, the, you know Noah's flood, we would say. Uh, what Jesus himself was dealing with when he was here on the earth. I think things were far, especially during the times, maybe say of Sodom and Gomorrah, because as uh, Doug Riggs pointed out when I had him on, and I'd actually caught the revelation of this and had expressed it even before I ever spoke to him, um, that Sodom and Gomorrah was not so much about homosexuality, but I could tell from the Hebrew language this was a was a perversion of interbreeding with fallen angels, Nephilim. In fact, if you go back and you read, and I got I was able to ascertain this from the writings of Ezra, uh, and last actually uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, was it? Let me pull that up real quick. Uh, not Ezra. I'm um, actually, uh, if we look at the uh, online King James Bible, it's actually Jude, I believe, is what I'm trying to think about there. Yeah, the book of Jude. Because Jude, and even Peter writes about this, I think in the second epistle of Peter, he writes about this when he talks about the common salvation. He said, and he writes about men that crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and dying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, hath, been, hath reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of the eternal fire. That strange flesh, and even in the Hebrew language, is not speaking about homosexuality. Although we know the scriptures condemns these things, but this is dealing with an inner in, inbreeding, just like we see in the case of uh, as I had actually mistakenly mentioned there, uh, Ezra, um, we know in the book of Ezra, we, we find that exact same thing through um, the, the uh, Israelite nation in chapter 9, where the Levites had not separated themselves from the peoples of the land. They were doing according to the abomination of the Canaanite, Hittite, Perizzites, Jebusites, it goes on and so forth. For they have taken the daughters for themselves and for their sons, that they have the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. And these people of these lands here were all, as we know from the scriptural reading out of the book of Genesis, they had mingled in with the giants, which were the Nephilim, the Nephilim. Uh, Anak, not Enoch, but Anak, A-N-A-K. He, His father was a Nephilim. They don't put the vowel points in the right place, but according to the book of Numbers chapter 13, he was a son of one of those fallen angels. And uh, many people like Doug Riggs and stuff speak about the breeding programs. We've actually had people come and fly here and meet with us about those breeding programs. So we've heard a lot of this type of information. And now we are on the precipice of seeing unfold right before our eyes a very demonic agenda. And I can only imagine that we are at the point of dealing with a reality very much similar to that of what happened before Noah's flood. There's going to be very few people that will make it. And I think the hour for us to be prayed up, searching our hearts, a true relationship with Jesus Christ like never before. This is what we need right now, friends. We need to make a stand for Jesus Christ like we have never stood before. Pray for your family and your friends like never before in your life. Pray for them. 
Um, I'm not here to say Mark of the Beast, things like that. I, I don't know the answer to those things right now. But I do believe that we are entering in to the to seeing Satan released. And this is, you know, they talk about, oh, they've been waiting for the winds to die down. No, they, they can only they can only approach when that when the, when when the, when it's lifted, when the time is lifted. As the scripture says, Satan knows that he has but just a short period of time, and he is seeking to whom he may devour like a roaring and like a roaring lion. Right? That's what we're about to face. And their push to annihilate humanity is greater than it ever has been in all the history of mankind. I want to bring one more thing to your remembrance here. When we talk about, um, when, I, when I say these things to you about this testing and stuff, if you remember, I'd shared with you a good friend of mine in Israel, very close ties with uh, Assad and other uh, military, uh, Israeli military intelligence and stuff. He has a very good friend that owns a company very similar to that of D-Wave, and if you recall, I talked to you about where he had shared with me that that friend, they, he was working with technology with some beings that had over a thousand IQ, is his thought. Uh, of course, my good friend uh, there in Israel said that he thought their IQs were more like 9,000, but they were working with genetics and wanted it for supercomputers to interact with this data and they are into for visualizations and what they're dealing with. Uh, and they basically are wanting to merge AI, artificial intelligence, with the human genome. Now, one of the correspondence that we did was back in July of 2019. D done several of them, different, different time periods, etc. And, you know, later, actually back in January this year, he also wrote me, he said, the article affiliated with the guy I knew that was doing all the genetic testing and social engineering and targeted populations. They're in all sorts of this stuff, like medicine or doctors. There are many subfields in tech research and procedures. He said, this tech is coming from things with the 9,000 IQs knowingly and unknowingly being downloaded into certain individuals' minds like Einstein and Tesla, etc. I was told this as a fact, not speculation. Then he shared with me uh, an article, Israeli academic Yuval Noah Hari of Hebrew University and Huawei Technology CEO Ren Zinge speculate about the dangers of technology posed to the privacy of the mind. And you know, the thing is, when it comes to the mind, the government has the technology to read your mind. That sounds pretty bizarre, doesn't it? You know, if you think about this, you know, just always keep in mind, I'll say this in closing. Satan wanted to be like God. He wanted to sit in the temple of God, be worshipped as if he were God. Remember that? And what did, I, what did I share with you guys about this long ago? We know that we are the temple of God. Jesus Christ, as the Bible says, God, the most high dwelleth not in temples made by hand, but a body has thou created for me. And that was God living in Jesus Christ. And then Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will be with you, even in you into the consummation. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Well, you see, Satan couldn't stand it. He wants to be like God. He wants to be worshipped as if he were God. Well, the only way he can get worship is to be in the human being. And he can't do that through a supernatural life of Christ, through the, through the, through the sacrifice when Jesus offered himself. It wasn't the fact, it wasn't just the fact that he died, it's the fact that in his death, it allowed the life that was in him to be parted, to come back upon us, the believer, so that it would make us complete one with him. 
That's when he said, in that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. You understand? The beauty was that he completed it through that minatorial work when he died on there, and his side was pierced by that Roman soldier. Actually, there's if you look at it in the Hebrew language, it, it appears to be that it was actually one of the temple guard soldiers that did that, but I don't know, it's speculation on my part. But at any rate, he, his side was pierced, and when it did, the water and the blood separated from him. Like he told the woman at the well, if you knew it was, it was you were asking uh, for a, or I was asking you for a drink. You'd ask me for a drink, and I'd give you water that you don't even have to come here to this well anymore. She said, "Sir, give me of this water that I live and thirst not." He said, "I'll give you water that flows from the belly." It was his own life separating from him. And that life was the Holy Spirit that come back upon us, that quickens us and makes us one with him. That's how you will know that you are in him and he is in you. Well, Satan wants that same thing. And he can't do it the way Christ does because he's not going to give up his life because he couldn't raise his life back up even if he did, right? So what does he do? He comes up with the technology and he gets a 5G where they can project thoughts into your mind. That's fallen demon Nephilim technology. By the way, just so you know, I'm not doing, see how messy my hair is. Anyway, <laughs> I feel like somebody's probably sitting there saying, oh, Steve went back to being Jewish. No. <laughs> uh, gosh. You know, friends, we're living in a very serious hour. Very serious hour. I trust that this information is a blessing to you. And I do want to thank you for those of you that are able to still support the broadcast that we're doing. We really appreciate your support. I also apologize that I couldn't make this video public on YouTube uh, other than the 30-second clip. But I think you'll understand as you're, if you've clicked over on iConnectFX to watch the video, uh, Patreon, I'll try to find a way to put it on Patreon through a YouTube channel, but we'll have to go to, to immediately to unlist it because they'll shut the channel down. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your help keeping us going here. Uh, our mailbox is still good in Florida. Uh, I think we can still, we can actually forward mail there too. We're, we got to make a rundown uh, anyway, so we'll check on these things. And we still have got to get the one set up here in Tennessee. But thank you. Uh, our website is IsraeliNewsLive.org. I know I said before I was going to post the link in there. It's kind of like if you do it with your email that's for your PayPal, whether you do it with credit card, whatever you do, you can do it that way. So I'll try to make sure I put it in the description below if you're wanting to support the broadcast. Take care of your family first, though, please. And uh, But if God lays it upon your heart to support this ministry, we do need your help, and we really appreciate it as well. Uh, and pray for our family, and we'll be praying for yours. Thank you, and good evening.